on one side like that. We cut on that side there to fit this here. And then in the back, to make this fit a little better, because we want the point to go in, we peel this off on the back, make it pretty much of a point like that. And that fits in there very tight. And you take your, your mallet and you tap, tap it in place. And you can't pull that thing out unless you really use force then. If you've done a good job, why, it's perfect. And it's very easy to do compared to the saw curve or the notch graft that the book tells you. They all perform the same thing. But now you've got to remember, we've got this thing in here and our bud's right here. Now, this is all cut surface and we're up here. This thing should be cut off so that, let's say it's about 10 to 12 inches below the lower wire because you've got to support this thing once it starts to grow. So you cut that off, you put it in place. Now, you've got to cover all your cut surface here with a grafting wax, a tree seal or tree heel. Everything that's cut all along here, you cover over all this here. You don't cover over your bud, you cover this right here. And the most common thing that we use is tree seal or tree heel. And what color is it? Black. Yeah, it's dirty stuff. When it, when it gets on you, it doesn't come off. It's water soluble until it dries. Well, black in the San Joaquin Valley, with all our sunshine, is murder. So if you do not cover this over with something light to reflect the heat, it's no use to do it. You'll lose it. So after you get through with putting your tree seal on it, then you put a cover over that with a latex paint. And it has to be a water soluble. If you use one of these organic solvents, you might as well stay home because you'll kill your material. Water soluble, get down, go down and get the cheapest paint you can get that's water soluble. It can be white, yellow, pink, any, any light color that will reflect the heat and just paint over it. Now, the easiest way to do it is go down to the lumber company and say, hey, you got any mismatched paints that are light color, water soluble? They, they generally have a couple of gallons. How much you want? Oh, two dollars. So in other words, you can talk them down to a couple dollars per gallon of paint. You buy the white latex, you might pay three dollars for it. So there's one way to save. Get a mismatched paint. They're happy to get rid of it, and you're glad to get it for a cheaper price. But it's one way we can graft at high level. Any questions so far? Now this is what you'll also do in the spring at the same time of, of the season. And let's, let's say we're talking about March now. You can do this in March when growth starts. Now, there's only one bad thing when you're grafting at high level. If it starts to bleed, you're in trouble. If your vines are bleeding, you, it's no use to graft because as soon as you put your tree seal or your tree heel on this cut, it'll wash it right off. So if it's bleeding, wait till it stops bleeding before you attempt to graft. Or graft a little earlier before your bleeding starts so that you can get your tree seal on here and it'll dry. Now, you want to come back about one week later after you've done this because quite often this tree seal will crack on you. And if there's any cracks, you want to make sure, especially around here, that they're covered up so you, that your cyan will not dry out. So you might have to come back maybe once or twice. If you see a crack, fill it up with, with tree seal, and then as soon as that dries, come back and, and paint over it again. You can be sloppy at painting. It won't hurt. And then... Generally about, though, these buds might sit here for two weeks, and then suddenly they'll start growing. They might sit there for three or four weeks. Some will sit there for a, for a month before they start doing anything. All of a sudden, boom, they just blossom out like that and start going. Now, if you've got a big stock like this, they'll go very rapid. So if, if you're down here, if you've grafted here and you've got, you got, say, a, a three to four inch stock and you put in two signs here, when that takes off, all you do is, is keep bringing this out here. By the end of the year, you're clear out and reestablished with your new vine. It takes a year to, to do this. So you've essentially lost one year. 
We did this down at Kearney last year. We had some some 10-year-old Thompsons. They were that big around. We put in two signs on either side of Sheen and Blanc. And we had this clear out to here. Some of these signs here had secondary clusters on them. We had so much vigor to it, those secondary clusters were pushed into the size of primaries. And on a few of these vines, we, we got about eight pounds of fruit off of them. But that's not, not the ordinary case. But we did it early enough to get these, these new cordons clear out to the end here and got a little bit of fringe benefit along with it. But I wouldn't expect fringe benefit on the first time you graft this, but at least you get your whole cordon reestablished out here by the end of that year. What percent take do you get? Uh, out of 22, no. Out of 30, out of 60, 63, no, 62, I had four misses, which isn't very good. That's not very good? No. Now, what Did I'll both do... Si both sides grow? Oh, no, no, no. Did they, at least one takes. Now, uh, next year though, on those three misses, I'll come back and cut this down a little and put them in right below there, as long as the vines are alive. Because they, these vines pushed out some shoots down here, so these trunks are still alive. But at least you don't destroy your trunk. Now, that's one type that you can graft at high level. There's one other type. We don't do it as much. It is possible. That's a bark graft. And that's essentially, well, let's get rid of this here. Your bark is very thin on the grapevine. You make a slit in your bark like this. And then you put your sign up alongside there and see how wide that is. And then just as wide as that sign is, you make your second slit. And then you take your knife and you peel back that little piece of bark and you slide your sign right down behind the bark. Now your sign looks like this on a side view. Here's your sign. Here's your bud. You can have a bud up here on the inside if you want. But right along on this side here, you make a long tapering cut just like this and then right at the tip here if you want you can also cut a little piece off right there to expose the cambium so this flat part fits against your wood there and it just slides right down behind there and you end up with that like there then you put a nail in here and a nail in there and then you cover the whole thing over with tree seal just like we do for the for the wedge now you can put in as many signs as you want, but you generally put, down, put say, one on either side. But wherever, wherever there's bark, if you want, you can put a sign in. There's only one catch to this type of grafting. You can't do it until the bark slips. And the bark does not slip, at least in Davis here, until May and June. So look how much later that is compared to March. You're losing two good growing months there. But in, in case a person were to wedge graft until the bark slips, then after the bark slips, if you haven't finished, you can still go through and put in some bark grafts. That's another way to, to get around it. This isn't used too much because you're doing it too late in the season. You don't get as much growth by the end of the year. If you're bark grafting, Say you have a head trained vine. Say you have a head trained vine here. The question was brought up because, in other words, if your vines bleed, you can't bark graft either because it won't callus when it's bleeding. On a head trained vine, it works nice. Right in here, say between your arms where you have some room to work, you could bark graft or you, you could even uh, notch graft right in there where you have say a lower arm that has leaves on it that's transpiring, you can leave one of those arms and it won't bleed on you. That's a sneaky way to get around this bleeding problem. Have we got the, uh, the overhead projector? Oh, okay.
Pardon? Ordinarily, we don't do it, no, no. Uh, there, there's too much competition from everything else to get it to take. Uh, let me get you... Uh, okay, plug it in there. I didn't have this earlier, otherwise I could... One thing I wanted to show you about this, this budding deal that we had here. When you're chip budding, can everybody see that? Okay, when you're chip budding, on a one-year-old stock, your cambium here is the same thickness as a cambium on your bud. Here's a, Here's a cambium on your bud. Here shows how thickness, thick it is. So in other words, this chip bud should fit this exactly. And there's no problem because then you have cambium-cambium contact in here. Now, like, like I told you, sometimes the first bud you put in fails. So that means that you, you wait till the second year to bud. Well, by the time you reach your second year, your rootstock's gonna be that much bigger and your bark is going to be thicker. So you got to remember now when you put your bud on there that this bark is half the thickness of this. So in order to make this cambium here on your bud line up with the cambium on your stock, you've got to bring that bud in a little because it's not as, the bark isn't as thick. So in other words, there's going to be a little bit of bark showing on your rootstock. And the best way to show you would be this thing right here. See, in other words, on a one-year-old, it should fit the, fit the slot completely. On a two-year-old, there should be a little bit of bark showing on your stock in order to get those two cambiums to line up. Now, there's also a possibility. Quite often, it's very difficult to get a big enough bud to fit on a two-year-old stock, or sometimes you can't get, get mature buds that are big enough even for your one-year-old. So if your bud is smaller, then you, what you want to do is actually fit to one side. In this case here on a two-year-old stock, it would fit to one side, but you still leave a little bit of gap here of bark showing on your, on your understock. Now, if it's on a one-year-old, you fit exactly to one side on your bud and leave the other side showing bark or wood, whatever it is, if you can't get your bud to fit, fit to one side. And we have, uh, let's see, a pictorial review. I think this is the right way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Who's, who's the projector operator back there? This is, this is bar graph showing you uh, just what it looks like. Is that focused? No. It's a can, all right, you can see the sign's been cut here, and we're pulling the bark away to insert your sign right underneath your bark. In other words, your bark slips, and you just put it right down in there. Now, the next, next slide, we've got it in. Now we're putting in these nails, two, two little galvanized nails, no problem. Don't use copper coat, whatever you do. But in other words, your, your lower bud is on the outside. It's right here, just about level with your uh, root stock. This has already been nailed in place. And here it is, nailed in place. Now sometimes I just cut maybe half an inch off that, that little piece of uh, bark here and sometimes push my bud right down to the, to the top here of my stock, but it makes no difference. And then you coat that whole thing over with tree seal or tree heel. Then after this dries, 
you, you put your white latex paint on top of it. Now you can see your blood swelling right in here. And I can't, you can't see much here. Your blood is starting to swell. And here it is. About six weeks later, you got a new shoot. <coughs> now, if you got a backyard and you want three or four varieties of table fruit on a single stock, you can put a Thompson here, you can put a Manuka here, you can put a Red Malaga here, a Revere here, and an Olivet there, anything you want. So in other words, a sneaky way to get more varieties on one stock is, is that way. Use a side of a different variety. Is that the last one? Okay. All right. Now, I think I've yacked enough. I thought I saved a half an hour this time. Let's take a little break, come back, and I'll show you the notch grafting or the wedge graft as I cut it here. And then I want you each to do a chip bud, a split graft, and a notch, a wedge graft. And with the sign up sheet here, I'll be able to check you off. So, in other words, I hold you for each one of those unless. If you feel you're going to be cutting yourself, tell me, and I'll excuse you. I don't want any more casualties. So we're going to make this an optional part of the course. You know. Eight stitches.